Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Assistant Chief Lindley Duncan. I am assigned to our Central Division, which is actually located in Fresno. And I'm here today with one of our helicopter pilots, Chris Barrett. Did I say that correctly? Okay. <laughs> Uh, who fills a, a part of our critical mission. Our mission as a department is to provide safety, service, and security to the people of California. And there are many aspects of that and many components of it, but one of the most critical aspects of that is our air operations. And they provide not only enforcement support, but they also provide a lot of search and rescue. Uh, what I'd like to do right now is let Chris give an overview, basically as to what his responsibilities are. Thank you, Chief. As the Chief said, my name is Chris Barrett. I'm a uh, pilot with uh, California Highway Patrol. I'm assigned to the Central Division, which is based out of Fresno. Uh, there are uh, eight divisions in the Highway Patrol. Each division has helicopters and airplanes. Um, this helicopter right here is an Airbus AS350B3. It is a uh, 2001. It's an older aircraft, but it's got a, a good maintenance record. Everything is updated and uh, per FAA standards. Uh, what we use this aircraft for is uh, law enforcement mission as well as search and rescue. We also do medevacs. The helicopter can be reconfigured for medevac configuration in which we can take critical people to the hospital. It's crewed by one pilot and it also has a flight officer paramedic on board so it is a full advanced life support uh, aircraft. Um, as I stated, the, uh, each division has a helicopter set up and an uh, airplane set up. Uh, the airplane does uh, primarily law enforcement as well as surveillance, uh, additional uh, resources for the ground officers. Um, we do a lot of the rescues, our division, we do a lot of the rescues out of Yosemite. We do vertical wall. We do have hoist capabilities on the other side of the aircraft where we can actually pick people up off the side of the, uh, the mountains. This aircraft uh, handles best at a high altitude. Uh, we do have Mount Whitney in our division, which is 14,500 feet. This aircraft can handle that uh, quite easily. It has a service ceiling of about 23,000 feet. Um, it, it works perfect for our type of mission. I'm gonna hand it back to uh, Chief Duncan. Okay, as we were talking about uh, initially, is air operations is one element of, of our mission. And, and our primary mission is to save lives. And uh, in addition to that, we're responsible for all state assets, safety, security, of state assets, that's state facilities, state personnel, and, and basically the, the state of California in general when it comes to the, the safe movement of goods and services and people throughout California. Right now, we're located at the Fort Tejon area office, and Fort Tejon parallels Interstate 5 just north of the grapevine. And at this particular office, they're responsible for, again, the safety of uh, people traveling through California, specifically in this particular region. Uh, there are many other components as to what we do as a department, uh, dignitary protection, commercial enforcement, and commercial enforcement would be a uh, considerable aspect of enforcement in this particular area because, as you can see, there's a lot of commercial vehicles. And when I say commercial vehicles, tractor trailers and and uh, vehicles to that nature that travel through this region. And we want to ensure that they, as well as everyone else, is traveling through safely. Uh, as I indicated, there are many other aspects as to what we do. Uh, we're responsible for not only the physical highway that you see here, we're also responsible, we, the California Highway Patrol, we're responsible for the superhighway, if you will, like the, the data infrastructure, the, the networking infrastructure, uh, concerning all state assets. Um, so th those are just a couple of aspects as to what we do. Uh, did you have any specific questions? Yeah, you brought up, so you are basically in charge also for cyber protection and cyber crime. That's correct. For state facilities or for the state uh, data for, for the protection of state infrastructure, that's correct. So you have your own specialist, detectives. And we do. You are in charge for basically prevent any kind of cyber attack. That's, that's true. There are many different aspects of safety and security uh, of California. And a lot of that, like I said, a lot of that has to do with, with the people in general. And when I say the people, it's the people of California. It's, it's not just the citizens, it's anyone who may be traveling through. And dignitary, you mentioned before, dignitary protection. So you basically uh, provide the security detail for Governor Jerry Brown and for dignitaries that come from other or say states, other countries. 
um, so you are in charge for these procedures as well, like the Secret Service kind of? Basically. Now, uh, yeah, we work with the Secret Service anytime, let's say the President or Vice President or any other dignitary happens to visit California, we will be associated with that protective effort. Uh, and again, this is a statewide effort. Right now, as I indicated, we're into Fort Tejon area. Fort Tejon is part of Central Division. California divides its field divisions into eight different field divisions. And Central Division, just to put it in perspective on how large it is, we're down at the south end right now. Uh, Central Division would go to the LA County line and as far north as the San Joaquin County line. So it, it's, it's a large geographical region of responsibility. There are many CHP commands within that area. How many um, officers, uh, or, yeah, officers do you have in the CHP throughout the state of California? For the state of California, we have approximately, for uniform personnel, for CHP officers, uh, approximately 7,500. 7,500. And then we have approximately 3,500 non-uniform personnel who provide a vital aspect of our mission and they are the support mechanism. I have one question, uh, one question for Chris. Uh, you mentioned that you're also involved in search and rescue and even EMS um, operations. How, how do you cooperate then with the local agencies? Do you have a contract with them or do you come in when requested via radio? How does the procedure work? We don't have any contracts where basically we come to assist any agency that asks for our help. Uh, for example, uh, Yosemite, we do a lot of rescues there. So Yosemite is a federal uh, entity, it's a, uh, a federal uh, park, but they'll call for our assistance and uh, we gladly will come in and do rescues to assist them and uh, do medevacs as well. Um, that's, that's essentially how it works throughout the state. Other law enforcement agencies will ask for our assistance. We gladly come in, do what we can do to help them out, and then move on to the next one. Um, like I said, there's no contract involved in that. That's just us helping all other law enforcement that agencies. Just uh, because they are, you know, because we are here at the corner of a couple of different counties with different EMS procedures, capabilities, and resources. Therefore, I'm just curious if, let's say, the uh, crews here from the Toronto office come to a major accident, uh, need immediate medevac, local medevacs are not available, then they can radio you and you could, uh, you know, provide uh, assistance if needed to do a life-saving transport to a trauma center or something like that. Correct? Uh, that that's correct. I, I can't speak in terms of the uh, medical protocol per each county. That is something that's beyond me. My paramedic and the uh, EMS operators deal with that. However, uh, I have never seen any problems with it. It's essentially throughout our division. We, uh, up in our neck of the woods near Fresno, um, we are actually on a medevac rotation where, uh, where the private entity, if they're busy on other medevacs or transports, then we'll step in and take medevacs. Additionally, we fly proactively where a lot of uh, EMS operators uh, fly reactively. So we're in positions uh, many times where we're closer to provide that assistance to the people that are on the ground and uh, we can provide that patient care in a much quicker uh, aspect if, if they're not near. And uh, we will, we'll land and we'll provide that uh, ALS uh, support. Like I said, the helicopter is completely uh, reconfigurable within minutes into an EMS configuration. And then our uh, paramedic, we always have a paramedic on board, is uh, able to do their uh, medic duties. And the paramedic, last question, is also a law enforcement officer yes. or is quote just a paramedic? Uh, no, no. Um, all of our air crews throughout the uh, state of California for CHP have all been officers for at least two years before they were able to get into the air operations section. Um, so we're all officers also. That's why you see us still geared up as normal officers because also uh, because there's so much rural area within a lot of our divisions, we're able to land and provide backup assistance as well to officers. Um, so we, we're still full, full uh, sworn officers. Absolutely. Thank you very much, gentlemen.